Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And some breaking news off the top of the hour. There are flight problems for the UConn men's basketball team. The defending champs are stuck here in Connecticut. They should be on their way out west for the final four. Yeah, we're being told mechanical problems have grounded the plane the Huskies were supposed to fly out on this evening after their big send-off from stores. Now the team and the NCAA are scrambling to find a way to get them to Arizona. We're going to have more on this breaking news coming up in just a moment. But first, we begin with a weather alert across a waterlogged state tonight as the rain continues to pummel Connecticut. Thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Brent Hartman. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Taking a look at that live radar, you can see all that rain. It was a soggy, windy, cold <laughs> night out there. Yeah. This spring storm has really caused some problems, too, across the state. It's almost uh, mm -hmm. not fair to call it a spring storm here, really. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. So, Rach, I know you've been following the storm all day. Is it going to clear up soon, or are we going to have more rain overnight and maybe tomorrow? Overnight, we'll continue to deal with areas of rain and even sleet, especially in the higher elevations. But we've had reports of sleet mixing in for other areas inland as well. I do think by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we might get a little grand finale in the form of a few snowflakes for parts of the state. And then the worst will be behind us with just some lingering light scattered rain and snow showers for the rest of the day tomorrow. We are watching again the potential for some minor to moderate coastal flooding during high tide tomorrow morning and that will be between 6 and around 9 a.m. So heads up for people along the immediate shoreline. If you park your car in an area that typically floods, move it to higher ground and there might be some road closures for the commute. Wind gusts between 35 up to 50 miles an hour with the highest gusts at the shoreline and also in the hills and some slippery spots for the morning commute mainly in the Northwest Hills, but there could be another couple of tricky spots out there. So check in with the morning show crew just in case. I think most of us are fine for the morning drive, though, because temperatures are above freezing. But where we are closer to freezing in northwestern Connecticut, there are more problems. So we've got areas of rain out there right now. There's a break in the action for western Connecticut, but still much more to fill in. So periods of rain, some sleep mixing in at times, and then here is that grand finale back edge as the storm is moving out we pull in just enough cool air that we could see some snow showers heading into the morning commute tomorrow this may be mixed with rain more than it's showing here on the future radar that being said again with temperatures above freezing it would be tough to accumulate anywhere outside of the hills where there could be some minor accumulations we'll take a closer look at your forecast and the changes for the weekend and beyond coming up Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, we're starting to see some damage from the storm. Mm. Brookfield firefighters say they had to rescue a family when the wind knocked a tree onto their car. They used a chainsaw to get that family out. This happened on South Obtuse Road. The family was parked in their driveway when the tree came down at 415 this afternoon. Thankfully, there were no injuries. And Connecticut's news station continues to closely monitor the storm. You can expect coverage on air, online, and on the free Fox 61 News app. Back now to that breaking news in involving the UConn men's basketball team. The Huskies should be on their way to the Final Four right now, but their trip has been delayed a bit. Yeah, the defending champs are still here in Connecticut right now. They were supposed to leave this evening from Bradley Airport. However, a multitude of issues have complicated that trip. The NCAA releasing this statement to Fox 61 about an hour ago, which reads, Due to mechanical issues with the original aircraft, UConn men's basketball team is experiencing a delay and is now projected to depart at approximately 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. In conjunction with the school and charter airlines, the NCAA worked to develop several options for travel alternatives to Phoenix. We are very disappointed that UConn will arrive later than anticipated, and it's unfortunate the team's travel experience has been impacted. So what does this all mean for the team? Well, the Huskies are going to have a very late night, most likely. They're expected to essentially take a red eye to Phoenix. We haven't heard if the new flight is nonstop to Arizona either. We're going to assume it is, but the Huskies don't play until Saturday, so they do have some time to catch up on sleep. But these travel problems are certainly going to throw off their schedules when it comes to practices, media availabilities, and much more. Yeah, it's not going to help. With both the men's and women's basketball teams back in the Final Four, UConn Nation is amped up at the thought of another national championship sweep. The women
women are already in Cleveland ahead of Friday's game. As for the men, despite their travel woes, UConn Nation came out to support them and send them off in style. Fox 60 Wins' Jake Garcia is live in stores with more. Hi, Jake. Hi, Britain, Sarah. Yeah, Husky fans did not let the rain stop them from coming out to support the Yukon men. Uh, but little did they know that mechanical issues would throw a wrench into the team's travel plans quite literally. But that aside, fans are still amped up at the hopes of getting another national title. For the second year in a row, the Yukon men are playing in the final four of the NCAA tournament. Fans of all ages lined up inside Gample Pavilion to stay dry from the rain to show their support for the defending national champions. Definitely excited to be inside other than outside, hopefully get some high fives. Some looking forward to meet their favorite players. My favorite player is probably Alex Caravan, so I'm ready to see him shoot some threes. My favorite player is Stefan Castle, and I'm really excited to see him play and hit, maybe hit some dunks because that's really exciting. While others looked forward to meeting head coach Dan Hurley. I have to say Dan Hurley, last time oh, he was yes. really hyped up. He got everyone in the crowd cheering yeah. and everything, so I'm excited to see Dan Hurley. His energy is contagious. Honestly, that's what you look for in a coach, so it just gets us all excited. Jonathan the 14th and the 15th were on hand to cheer up fans and send the team off to Arizona, though neither Husky mascot will travel this year. The 14th is officially retired, but still makes some on-campus appearances. The 15th not ready for a cross-country trip quite yet. Some fans think this is the year that both teams can make it to the end. 2004, 2014, 2024, we got it. Head coach Dan Hurley delivered one final message to UConn Nation before heading to the airport. We're, we're, we're going to go out there and, and try to get you that number six right there. We put it right next to the last year's one. 2023, let's get 2024. Go UConn! The crowd braving the rain and wind as players boarded the bus, cheering as the men pulled away from the basketball capital of the world, bound for the final four. Now, the university will be holding watch parties for both teams this weekend, but it's only open to students. Reporting live in stores, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Jake. And Fox 61 sports director Jonah Cart made it to Arizona for the men's final four. He'll have the latest from Glendale coming up at 11. He'll give us a report from the ground. And as for the other half of Husky Nation, the women's basketball team foregoing an official send-off, traveling directly to Cleveland after their win in Portland, Oregon on Monday. The Huskies arrived at their hotel last night, and they are looking forward to Friday. That's when they take the court in the Final Four matchup against All-American Caitlin Clark and the number one seed Iowa Hawkeyes. Fox 61 will also be in Cleveland for all the action. Our own Brooke Griffin arrived this afternoon, and our coverage will begin tomorrow afternoon. And new at 10 tonight, an inmate in the Montville State Prison faces new charges tonight. A murder for hire plot against four people in Groton, a man and woman in their 20s, and their two girls, ages 1 and 10. State police say this all started in 2022. The would be killers were the prisoner's cellmate and his brother, who at that time served in the U.S. Army. The cellmate demanded $10,000 for each hit, but told police he never intended to go through with it and instead alerted the targets who contacted police. Now, 32-year-old Joshua Peekert and his 30-year-old brother Jeremiah each face charges of conspiracy to commit murder. Another reminder for drivers to slow down and move over when you see emergency vehicles. This was the scene last night on Route 8 in Beacon Falls. A driver failed to move over while emergency crews were responding to another crash. State police say two cars crashed head on first and one of the drivers was driving the wrong way. But then as emergency crews were responding, another driver hit a Beacon Hose Company pickup truck. Minor injuries were reported in that crash. No firefighters were hurt. And the rain-soaked roads aren't the only danger when you're behind the wheel. All this month, state and local police, along with the Connecticut Department of Transportation, are reminding you to put down the phone or pay. April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, and as Fox 61's Matt Karen explains, efforts are underway to make the roads a safer place. Well, behind me is I-84 in Waterbury. It is one of the most heavily traveled thoroughfares in the state. And for this month, it's also going to be one of the most heavily patrolled. And that's because police are stepping up their distracted driving enforcement. The month of April is filled with reasons to watch the road. The rain, uh, you know, visibility, 
Uh, all of these things can play a factor. The messaging is to put away the phone or pay. Not only do April showers contribute to reduced visibility, but April is also prime pothole season. This year, it also happens to coincide with a solar eclipse that threatens to draw eyes toward the sky. Distracted doesn't necessarily mean that you're playing a game on your phone or you're sending emails. It could be changing the address on your GPS. It could be reaching into the back seat. Uh, it could be eating some food or on your way to work in the morning. Anything that's taking your eyes off the road. For 2021, the most recent year of state data available, there were more than 5,600 distracted driving crashes in Connecticut. They resulted in more than 850 injuries and nine deaths. If they're distracted, they could cause a crash and kill somebody. It's why police are stepping up enforcement of the state's distracted driving laws, especially when it comes to young people. 16 and 7 year olds are, are not even permitted to have any handhold devices uh, in their car. Uh, it's even more important with the younger, newer drivers to have uh, zero distractions. In Waterbury alone, police issued 85 tickets and conducted 145 distracted driving traffic stops last year. The enforcement that we do is going to be based on crash data that we collect to target the efforts of our officers to kind of concentrate in those areas. And don't discount the impact that that solar eclipse can have on distracted driving. In fact, for the last eclipse that we had in 2017, the data shows that deadly accidents related to that in and around that time increased by 31%. Reporting in Waterbury on a very wet, rainy, windy day, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.